All right, everybody, as we dive into um, our summer series of podcasts, I want to remind you that you can go to the turquoiseirisjournal.com and subscribe. Now, don't forget your friends and your mom and your daughters because uh, the journal can be given as a gift. We also have a digital subscription as well as a quarterly and an annual. Uh, when with our summer coming out literally this week, the pages are packed full of engaging stories. Our focus word, each volume is different. And this one's is engage, uh, which is really perfect for the engaging season uh, with lots of brides and weddings. And although we are not celebrating a wedding in this volume, um, we are celebrating the creativity and how it kind of works as a catalyst to opening up opportunities to engage. So check that out. Let us know your thoughts anywhere on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, um, and we would love to hear from you. So as I dive into meeting Cheryl, I want you all to give her a big welcome. I also wanna make sure before you leave today that you scroll down to the description and that you like and follow and subscribe Cheryl here. So. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hello, hello. I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, man, we've tried a few times to get connected, but sometimes yeah. as busy as our business schedules are, um, it's yeah. hard to get things lined up. So I'm thrilled to have you here. Go ahead and tell everybody where you are and kind of an overview about what you do. And then we're going to dive into some fun questions. Okay, great. So I am Cheryl Tachi. I am with JJB Design. I actually have several businesses, but I'm with JJB Designs. I have Blue Granite Bookkeeping, Creative Connection Consulting, which we have that little thing about. Mm -hmm. And then I am located in Hollis, New Hampshire. I love being up in New England. That's one of my things. I've, I grew up here, lived in Florida for a short period, but wound up back here again because this is home for me. Okay. Oh, I've only been to the New England area one time, and that was last year when we had a retreat in Connecticut. But I loved it so much. I'm going back to Connecticut this September. So I'll be there in a couple of months. It's really beautiful that time of year. You're not far from me. So Connecticut is about, depending on where in Connecticut, it's about two and a half to three hours. I am literally on the New Hampshire and Massachusetts border. Okay. Well, I'm going to Glastonbury. Okay. Okay, so um, Pat has the Connecticut River Valley Inn, and we hosted the retreat there last year, and we loved it so much. They fed us so well. We, everything was in walking distance, and I went, oh, no, we're coming back. So we'll be there yeah. September 13th through the 17th. Uh, so you should come see us, Cheryl. Uh, I will definitely try. I would definitely try for sure. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it really would be. Um, so she was just mentioning that she has several businesses. We featured her in one of the volumes of the Turquoise Iris Journal. And that's what this podcast is all about. This is saying, hey, I saw the images. I read the story, but I want <clears throat> to, excuse me, I want to meet the person. I want to actually hear them. So we started this podcast as a way to support the journal and just kind of allow a, I'm super nosy and I love to get to know people. I figure everyone's my friend. I figure if they're going in the magazine, I want them to be my friend. So this gives me a selfish reason to get to know you. Um, but tell me a little bit about like what your day to day, you mentioned several businesses. So are those yeah. part of what you work on every single day of the week, Cheryl? Yeah. So, um, it's crazy. I actually had a meeting this morning with somebody and he asked me everything that I do. And he said to me, how do you do it? I said, how could you not do it? So for me, staying busy and doing different things is just what feeds my soul. So my main quote unquote moneymaker is I have a bookkeeping firm, bookkeeping and advisory firm. Okay. And I am a high level, I do high level accounting. And um, okay. so I have people that work for me. That's my main moneymaker. Okay. Then I also do consulting for creatives. I have several um, people within the creative industry that reach out to me. And what I consult them with is typically like how to do passive income. Um, because it's a really missed opportunity that a lot of people miss. Yeah. And 
business sides of things like are you have your bookkeeping and stat tack do you have somebody doing your social media if you're not doing it's really important you talked about engage is your number is your um word for yeah. yeah and engage is super important because no matter what you do in life if you're doing something as a quote unquote business you have to engage right you yeah. have to have people engage with you so that's one of the things that i i do with my consulting part of it but then my, um, the thing that truly feeds my soul is my painting mm -hmm. and my art. Um, I design coloring books as well. Um, that's a real fun part. And then my side side business is I have a company called Mad Hatter Mug and I design really snarky mugs. Oh, fun. So yeah, you've got this set up to where you tap into the analytical and the numbers crunching and then the service as well as um, lift kind of like this service of like, hey, if I can, you can. There really is a very positive way for a creative person to actually build a business. But yeah. It seems daunting. And I'm sure you run into that in the same way that I do. It feels daunting to a lot of creative businesses. Yeah. You go, okay, I'm going to create but who's going to do all that other stuff that I don't want to do, right? Yeah. So I find that very much so specifically with bookkeeping uh, in the in the books end of it, they think, well, I'm just going to sell and that's all I need to do. So for example, um, I'm sure everybody's heard about all the IRS rules for Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, all the Etsy. You know, this year it's likely been brought down, brought back up to 10,000, but starting next year, it'll be at 600. Anything you take over 600, you're going to, this year, actually, you're going to have to report. So, mm -hmm. um, and people don't understand that. They think, well, I'm just going to sell it and that's all it has to do. But it's really hard to have a hobby now that not make it a business. And um, what I, what I tell people, and I know you do as well, is you can either have a hobby or you can have a business, but if it's a business, you have to treat it like a business, mm -hmm. you know, and, Absolutely. and do the business stuff. So I love empowering people, showing them how they can do that. And then again, showing them the passive income ways like designing mugs that are fulfilled by somebody else. My coloring books I design and they get fulfilled by somebody else. My decoupage is all my paintings that I take images of. And then again, they get fulfilled by a fellow friend of ours over at PBJ Prints. I love, love, love those nice. ladies. Nice. So, yeah. So, you know, I think that that's definitely something that a lot of creatives, um, they love to create. And I love watching people create, but they forget that other part of it. That's really important. It is really important. And the other thing we don't want them to do is we want them to know they can learn so they don't bail yeah. on it and they don't say, I just can't. Like totally. that's the hardest thing for me as a mentor to go, what do you mean you can't? I think you can. You just, you know yeah. what I mean? And if they want, you know, you, you run into um, the fear. Some of our, our demographic just says, I don't want to learn something new. I'm past that stage of my life. And, and you completely understand that. But yeah. I do like to pull their hold their hand and guide them along the way. Cheryl, let's go back. Let's rewind a little bit because I okay. want to know about little Cheryl. I want to know, did you think when you were 10 years old that you were going to grow up and be a business owner? Um, crazy enough, yes. Yes. I know that sounds crazy. So it's funny because I, again, had this conversation and people laugh whenever I say this conversation. When I was a little girl, I was the one that, like, I'm going to age myself right now. Like I looked at the TV guide and I was like, I'm going to draw the turtle and I'm going to draw the pirate and I want to send it in. And I would beg my parents to send it in so I could win the contest to go to art school so oh. that I could do a graphics business. And um, fantastic. <laughs> I started my first business probably the age of 20 wow. and it was bookkeeping. So wow. um that's no, amazing. 21. I have to think about how old my children were uh, or my daughter. I didn't have all children at that point. <laughs> I was 21. I was a young mom. Um, yeah. And I've owned many different businesses. I've always been a serial. We call me the serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But I don't just own a business because I think, wow, I really like that. I look at it and I go, what can I do to build this business to sell it? Mm -hmm. So my, I always have an exit plan for every business. And it's one of the things that, again, I teach, if you're going to start a business, you should always have an exit plan, even if it's just passing it on to family. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I knew, I knew. 
<laughs> so you knew you always had that type of mind, but you also always had that that art instinct, which yes. is why you studied the TV guide and looked at all of that and thought, how can I do this? How can I make this? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, my parents would be like, you know that you're only like eight years old, you can't get a scholarship yet. And I'm like, why can't I? Like, I never accepted the, you can't do it because you're of your age. I'd be like, why can't I? You know? Oh, I yeah. What's the, what's your favorite project that you've worked on over the years? Um, has that been a bookkeeping private project? Um, like, no, the no. I, I can easily answer that. I think my favorite project was when I was trying to start trying to figure out if I was going to start another business that I had. And it was a very successful business that I sold in 2019. I couldn't figure out how I was going to do this. I wanted to start a paint and sip with glassware because yeah. I was painting wine glasses and stuff. And I got all of my nieces and nephews together and just bought a bunch of glassware and a bunch of paints. And I just put it all in the middle of the table. And I said, let's create. And watching those kids just paint whatever their hearts desired and just letting like their selves come out. Uh -huh. But knowing that I was teaching them, I just loved it. And actually, believe it or not, that business was probably one of the most fulfilling businesses that I ever had. It became a large national company. I had 52 women all over the United States that worked for me teaching people how to paint on glassware. Oh, but the the filling part about it was that person that would walk into the party and go, I can only, I can't even draw stick figures. I'll be like, you're my favorite person for this class. And then when they leave going, I can't believe I painted that. That was so wonderful. Da, 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 da. So to me, that was probably the project of getting it going and yeah. understanding how the empowering people to bring out their creative side. That was my favorite all time thing ever I've done for business slash creative. It makes sense that it would start with the kids and start with the family um, and watching yeah. your eyes get that same experience that you would get when you were little and doing that. And then yeah. wanting to recreate that over and over. You know what? That's part of why I do the magazine. I remember years ago when I had first started, I started a blog because I thought that's what you're supposed to do, even though I hated writing and I was learning how to take pictures, <laughs> but I was learning how to paint too. But I wanted to be featured on Miss Mustard Seed's blog. And that was like a thing. I was like, how do I get in front of her and all these other bloggers? So I thought every time I did a piece of furniture, I did a blog, told a few colors, da, 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 da. Didn't know what I was doing. But when she featured me like three different times over the years, that was the feeling that I hung on to. It was like recognized, yeah. seen. And I made that like vow to myself, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I want to recreate that. And of course, Blogspot and the the trains, the follow trains, Friday follow, those don't, those aren't a thing really anymore. Blogs are yes. huge. Um, but that part of it, I wanted to recreate so somebody else could feel empowered, which was just yeah. just that, like, you're doing good, keep working, keep learning. People are seeing you, you're yep. growing, you're growing. And that was what I needed. And so I feel like part of that is the magazine is being able to recognize someone and say, yes, you belong with all these other people. Yes, you belong inside this creative world. And we're going to highlight that. Um, so I get that feeling, uh, Cheryl, yeah. really well. It's a feeling like um, if you could bottle it, and just be like, this is a feeling and sell that feeling or give it away. Actually, I wouldn't have sell it. I would give it away because the empowerment that you feel when that happens. And as far as how it feels to be in your magazine, you're absolutely correct. So um, I know that you and I talked about this before, but I actually keep your magazines because I purchase your magazine. So if you don't subscribe, just subscribe because they're pretty cool. All the all the articles. And it's great to put faces in name, to names and understand everybody. Um, you learn about different people that you just didn't know. You know, Kimberly Ryder probably learning about her um, was probably one of my favorite things that I followed through your through your magazine but yeah. being in there it does feel empowering and then when people come over and my husband sister by you got to look at that that issue Cheryl's in that issue with all of her artwork and you know and I'm just like you know oh, it's, it's even better when your husband says it right yeah yeah <laughs> he's he's my biggest supporter he truly is he's really like I I don't know what I would do without he all my crazy ideas 
he literally supports me. He's built me staging areas. He's built me offices. He's built me painting areas. He built me a granite top portable thing to push around my studio. He, he, all my crazy ideas, he does it for me. And then when I'm done with it, he's like, okay, he doesn't even care. He's amazing. The oh only thing God. I have to hope is that when I pass that he never finds out how much I really paid for all the stuff that I have for paints and crafts and artwork. <laughs> That's it. Everything else he's super supportive of. Because lucky for you, you also do the bookkeeping. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what, Cheryl? It reminds me one time I was trying to do like five canvas. I love painting on a five foot canvas, but in my studio is pretty small. And so Matt built like this and I was pulling them off, flipping them because I was doing abstract for, for a long time. And I still do abstract. I did some this morning, but he built me a, a easel that would flip. Spin? And it would spin. The best? He worked so hard on it. But my studio was so small that I tried <laughs> working with it on a few live videos at night. And I would be like, hey, guys, hold on. We're spinning. And then it would like get stuck or something. He worked for like two weeks on this thing. And then it just, it was clanky and it had to go back out, but he still had the best attitude. So I love, I love hearing you say that your husband has the best attitude, never complains. He was like, it's okay. Yeah. We tried. You know, we tried. I just wanted it to be something unique that nobody else had. Yeah. 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 No, that's great. Our husbands are the same. I told him I needed to organize my shoes and he built this one with all these cubbies in it that turns around. The problem was we couldn't get it out. It was our old townhouse we couldn't get it out of the closet because he built it in the closet um <laughs> so we left it for the people that moved in after we did <laughs> oh shoot well they were he's they always were... been that person <laughs> okay that's so good i'm glad yeah he'll love listening to this and hearing you brag on him just a little bit so absolutely and thank you for saying that about the magazine i know that it's very special um it a you know a founder of something where you get to hold it you know, every volume has like 15 to 20 stories. You just, yeah. you want everyone to know about it. You know, print is not, yeah. print is not dead. People say print is dead. No, it's actually not. Um, mm -hmm. And especially for our demographic, we really prefer a print magazine. So thank you for helping me get that word out. I would love to also know if that was your favorite past project, do you have a dream project or a dream collaboration um, of something that you would really like to do in the future? So truthfully, honest truthfulness. Um, so I've met so many people within the creative industry, like I could list them. Um, one of the people that I've literally has become one of my best friends is Kristana, right? So okay, I, she literally is one of my best friends. I love her dearly. I've met a lot of other wonderful people like Llewellyn, mm -hmm. um, yourself, um, and I've met them and I've met Brandy and I've, you know, we've all become friends within the industry, but to get everybody together in one spot for just one, just like girls retreat away, like all of us that have connected within the industry, Kimberly, who I love dearly, um, you know, yourself, um, Renee Smith. Oh my goodness. I can't talk enough about Renee Smith. You know, <laughs> yeah. I get to interview um, her again today. She, she's on the podcast too. Is she? I love her. Um, Kelly Huskins, you know, like Kelly is amazing. I love her dearly. Another great friend of mine, um, Jill Herrera, you know, she's wonderful. The Painted Hand, which nobody really sees, but her name's Jessica. She's amazing. Like there's so many amazing people in this industry yeah. that it would be nice to just have the Great Gardens girls, another set of really talented ladies, you know, to just get them all, everybody together in one place to just have like this awesome just like this feel good just hang out create together no paint brands no limitations I, just I, enjoying creating i love that that would be a dream for me i have to second that i think that mm -hmm. would be incredibly amazing and i would love that so much too so we just have to keep saying that that keep saying it cheryl yeah it. yeah it would be amazing to have something like that um put together uh, just really elevating the industry. I feel like that would do it. Yeah. I think that for a long time, a lot of, um, in this industry, a lot of us like, well, this is this paint brand and this is this paint brand. And this is, you know, this transfer brand and this is this and this. And, 
you know, and the reality of it is, is um, we're all the same and we all are creative and we all have wonderful things about us. We all have things about us that other people probably don't care for, but that's okay. But we all are who we are. And if we were all exactly the same, it would be such a boring world. But I, I guess I'm that person like, why can't we all just get along and just all hang out together and not worry about who's painting with what and doing what. And, and I like that it's, it is starting to get that way. And it's nice and I love it, but if we could just all get together. So that's that's a mission for you. It's a mission for me. I'm trying to grow up and everybody in the magazine, everybody, everybody yeah. my friend. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I just everybody's my friend. Um yep. because I think that is the energy that I choose to have around me. And the only amazing thing is put that energy back out. And so I'm only welcoming that kind of energy and I'm only putting that kind of energy out. I love it. And that is incredibly valuable for mm -hmm. all of us for this yes. industry to be here 50 years mm -hmm. from now. because yeah. years from now 30 years from now like that is incredibly important for this to be because one of the reasons I started doing Facebook live Cheryl so many years ago was because I wanted to elevate like I wanted our image to be taken seriously so it was like okay yeah. I've gone to enough thrift stores and saw some painted furniture and then that type of furniture where people just slapped it on really fast, it makes there's it makes people mad. Like, you know, some people are like, oh, this makes me so mad. There's always going to be mad people. But yeah. I thought, what if I could show people how to do it a little bit better and higher quality to where mm. people went, oh, now I like that. And if I could do that, then she could help her and she could help her and he could help him. You know, like it could, it could continue. So I really wanted to like raise the bar for furniture artistry. And I knew yeah. that had to be a thing. And of course, I'm like you, you love painted furniture. I'd rather go buy something painted than something that's brand new, completely perfect. I'd rather, yeah. week, I'd rather have something painted um, because yeah. I appreciate the art side of it, right? Just like you. Yeah. So one of the things that it's funny you say that because I do feel like you were one of the pioneers in this industry to teach people and to let people understand that art can be done on furniture. It doesn't have to be on canvas. It doesn't have to be on, you know, paper. It doesn't have to be on other stuff. Like you can put art on furniture. And I think that you definitely are one of the pioneers that taught that. Um, and it's helped lead the way for a lot of people like myself to be able to do that type of stuff and be taken seriously. And we are taken seriously, right? Like that's yeah. a big thing, you know? And I, the first time I was on Miss Mustard Seeds, they, uh, her blog, I had two shades of blue. And I remember thinking, there's two colors on here. <laughs> like, I don't know if she's gonna like this, but that was the, 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 that was the piece she picked. And I was using latex back then. And I remember, I, I used navy and turquoise and I painted it navy, put the turquoise on top of it and then sanded it with a sander. And there was something right here that was like, hello, hey girl. Yeah. Do more of this. And I went, well, what if I had in yellow? And then what if I put in coral? And then it got <laughs> higher and higher and higher. And I remember being panicked. When I would do those first Facebook lives, I would sweat and just get nervous and get breathy and think if I show them that I'm spraying water on this furniture right now, they're going to unsubscribe. They're going to think, no, nope, she's crazy. She's loco. Uh, she's lost her mind because I was doing furniture, furniture artistry before art. Like in my mind, I wasn't an uh -huh. artist. I just needed to pay my stinking bills. And that's yeah. what I need to do that. It was just pay the bills, flip it, go, go, go. But then all of a sudden this artist started bubbling up in me and I went, oh, more colors makes me happier. So I should roll with that, right? So what's your mm -hmm. favorite? Color? Like, what is your favorite kind of design style, Cheryl, to paint? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I really don't have a favorite. I could tell you that I have several that I tend to dabble in more than others. Okay. I do love a really textured, grungy, like I have this painting in my mind right now that I've literally been trying to figure out to find the time to do it because I really want to do it. So that's definitely one of the things, a lot of texture and grunge to it with peek through. I love to have the peek through of a design peeking through. Absolutely. Um, 
I also love doing realistic animals. So realistic paintings of animals are definitely one of my jams. Well, and that's one of the things I get requested the most, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then the third thing that I started doing because of um, Melanie from Art by Melanie, mm -hmm. and I both took a class. Um, we took the same class by Deb Weir, and it was doing the funky abstract faces. Oh, and yeah. I fell in love with it. And the reason I fell in love with it is because when you're doing realistic stuff all the time, you're stuck in like this box of how you're doing it because it has to look realistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when you're doing this abstract, like I could just draw and do different things. I'm like, this is so great. I'm like not stuck in a box, you know? So um, yes. I think those are probably my three things and they're very different, but three things that I tend to gravitate towards more than anything else. Well, I love that they're very different. I think that yeah. that's important for you to kind of grasp like a, a, a broader range for your artistry and how that can like, spill over so did you have any art training growing up like did you go to school or anything for art or did no no as a matter of fact in high school i had um i was in art classes all through school high school and one of my art things was to sit in front of a paint they you had to draw um like a, the luck of the draw on what you had to paint okay and mine was sitting in front of a pay phone because in 87 there were payphones okay. and i had to sit in front of a payphone and draw and paint this payphone with graffiti and everything oh. and i'll never forget i was so excited because it got chosen to be in filing basement on the walls there for a couple of years and my sister still has it and my oh. sister my sister moves around a lot for work everywhere she goes she takes a picture of it in her house and she <laughs> keeps it um Special. but that literally high school was the only training. And now my training that I do is YouTube. <laughs> and I take a lot of classes um, online. If I if I see something I really like yes. and I want to learn it, I, I take classes. OK, online. that's fantastic. Um, I haven't I didn't do any training like that. Actually, it's my in art schools where I met Matt, my husband. Yeah in the one art class, I was a senior and I couldn't really focus because he was next to me. Like I could <laughs> focus on it. His stuff was better than mine. And I was just like, we sat at these big tables and yeah. like he was sitting next to me and I just, I couldn't focus. I don't really remember much about the class. That's hilarious. So when you said you couldn't focus because the stuff was better, I was like, she couldn't focus because of him or his artwork, which one was it? <laughs> It was, him. it was him. It wasn't his artwork necessarily. I mean, he, I did feel like he did better than me. Um, I still feel like a lot of times he does better than me. Um, but at art, like if he's painting me and I'm painting him, he, you know, he's more very black and white, no abstract. And so he will literally just like, like sketch me out. And I'm like, I can't draw. I don't draw. Yeah. I just go all the way across it. Um, but it was because he was sitting next to me, Cheryl. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome and hilarious. Actually. I walked to the car the third day after <laughs> I, the third day of that semester. I walked to the car with my best friends and I said, I'm going to marry Matt Woods. <laughs> and you did. I did. How long have you guys been married? Oh, sure. Let's see. It's going to be 26 years next month. That's amazing. Good for yeah. you guys. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you so you much. You don't hear that a lot anymore. It's nice to hear. Well, we still really like each other too. So that makes me. That's cool. good. That's important. That's a really important part of a marriage. So. <laughs> yes. Right. So if somebody, if somebody comes across your page and they want to learn from you, Cheryl, what do they need to do? What's the best, like the process for someone working with you? So depending on what it is that they want to learn, it doesn't really matter. Just reach out anywhere. Just reach out to me. You can reach out to me on either any of my pages. You can reach out to me on my website. I am very um, accessible. I answer everybody. I don't believe in having other people respond for me. Um, yeah, just reach out. I'll I'll talk to anybody and I'll help anybody. I I feel like okay. everybody at one point started, you know. And so JJ Bean, where where did that come from? Tell everybody. It's my favorite. One of my favorite stories. <laughs> so. I have my three youngest grandchildren are 
Jordan, who is with me right now for the summer, actually. He's the oldest of the younger grandchildren. I have an older grand granddaughter, but the youngest grandchildren. So it's Jordan with a J. Okay. And then Jameson was the other boy. And then my granddaughter, Jaylee, we called her Jaylee Bean. So it was JJ Bean Designs. So it's for my grandchildren um, who my why is absolutely my family. So yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Very, very special. Um, and I always think it's also fun for people that are kind of wondering about turning that hobby into a business. They kind of yeah. often will get stuck on a name. Um, and so for you, yours is family. For me, mine is family. <clears throat> Sorry. It's gonna be a long day of podcasts if I have to keep having this issue. Yeah. <laughs> it's allergy. <laughs> um, mine is family too. So my Iris was actually after my mother and my grandmother's middle name. And Aww. I thought if they can be as strong as they were and are, surely I can do this business, which I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to work for myself. That was too much pressure. And that was for everybody but me. That was not my right. jam. Um, but I kind of found myself here and, um, you know, enjoying it and thriving. So Iris was that reminder, the way that JJ Bean is a, is a reminder for you too, that family is definitely... Yep what your why is. So good. I'm glad that you shared that on here too. Um, is there any advice that you would give somebody who's just starting out? So this will be your last question. Is there any advice yeah. that, yeah, that you would give someone that were on the fence about, you know, just elevating up, like, you know, I think I could actually turn this hobby into a business. Yeah, so I think that the biggest thing that people have is that hurdle of believing in themselves. And everybody's creativity is very important for so much in this world. Like it really truly is like, for me, I, I like we talked about, I think having children be creative is one of the most important things you can do, it keeps their mind going. And I think that if somebody is on that fence on starting their business, just do it. What's, a, what's the worst that's gonna happen, right? what you're you successful, you don't you want do to be great. You know, yeah. what's the worst you can happen. And then the other advice I would give is always stay true to who you feel you need to be and what you need to paint. Um, and don't get the imposter syndrome. Cause that happens a lot within this industry where people will say, well, this one did this and I looked great. So I'm going to try and paint like them, but you're not them paint. What you feel feeds your soul and your heart. And that's what you should do. Absolutely. I second that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl, thank you so much for being on here with You're welcome. me. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This oh was great. Goodness. Uh, you'll have to come back sometime. And um, you guys, if you have not checked out the Turquoise Irish Journal, be sure you catch Cheryl's feature. Um, she shows that artwork that she was talking about. And um, this has just been an absolute treat. I'm sorry that it's been so it's been this long before we've had a conversation, um, but I'm glad we got to do it here and share it with everybody else too, Cheryl. Yes, I I can't thank you enough for all the opportunity you've given me. I, I, it's amazing. Thank you. Oh, oh, well, no, it's my pleasure. Uh, everybody, please, again, scroll down to the description. Our Cheryl's links are there. You can email her, check her out, go follow her. And of course, um, paint, create, be inspired, because that's what will happen definitely when you check out Cheryl's work. My friend, I will see you soon. See you next yes. time. Yes. Yes. Right. Thank you right. so much. We'll see you. All right. Bye-bye.